Okay, so back with uh, Project Super Sport. Uh, if you can start seeing, we are going back together. And one indication is that we're getting closer and closer to starting this beast <laughs> is um, we're checking our spark plugs. So we're using the spark plugs that were back in there. These are Bosch Platinums. And I don't believe there were many miles on these uh, when they were changed out. But as a precaution, we thought we would clean them and make sure the gap is still good to see if we need to go get new ones. And as I checked them, I told my partner over here that we are about 35 thousandths uh, gap. And he checked the book that we have over here. And on this uh, V8 305, the spark plug, spark plug gap uh, spec is was it 0 0.045 so we're just showing you a better angle of this i kind of did a little more so see we're still not at our 0 0.45 thousandths so i'm going to give it a little more just a little bit go all right now we're at 0.4 we get a little more uh, almost almost eh, almost uh, right there now we're good so that's what i'm talking about now that this one's gapped this right here the spark travels through the spark plug through the electrode and then here's your ground and there's a little spark that jumps which causes or creates our combustion in the uh combustion chamber so we'll go into that in another episode but we're, we're gapping these i have two more left on uh, this side of the engine right here and then i got all four on this side and um if i didn't say this before uh, just because of video editing stuff. Uh, it's better that we are on the smaller end of the gap than the larger end, because we can get larger. It's really not always smart to decrease because you can break this uh, this ground right here. All right, check it out. There's some, there's some holes in our engine. What are those, huh? What are those? Well, that is where the spark plugs are gonna be housed for a long, long time. All right, now we're transitioning back top of the engine. So we got the, we're on the passenger side of the engine here. We got the last four spark plugs. So we got our anti-seize right here. And you just put a thin layer on the threads, maybe a quarter to half the, the threads because it'll go around as you spin it in. And uh, this this will prevent this uh, threads from rusting up to the inside of the engine and uh, getting stuck, being permanent and breaking it the next time you try to take it out. So. Uh, it's always good anytime you change your spark plugs on any vehicle to put a light coat of uh, anti-seize on there. So we'll throw these bad boys in here and then uh, we'll talk about firing order in a minute when we have to put our spark plug wires on. Here's our firing order right here. All right, stand by to stand by. While he's in there doing that, we'll come here, look at her firing order here. It's actually gonna be this one, 1975 and later. So we're on the passenger side of the engine here and he can show you where the spark plug wires go to the distributor, each individual wire, and it's numbered on the distributor as well. So uh, once we get these spark plugs in, we'll go and oh, grab our wires over there. There's our distributor and uh, we'll trace those wires down and make sure that we get all the firing order correct. So uh, it is a very good thing to have this book because uh, if you mess up just one of these wires, engine may run, but it'll run terribly. So this is very, very important. As soon as we get these spark plugs in, we'll get all these wires in in order and uh, we'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so I'm putting the uh, front end back together of the engine, all the, the accessories, uh, power steering, uh, the air pump, the alternator, uh, the AC, you know, the AC doesn't work, but putting it in case in future, in future uh, it gets replaced or uh, converted from uh, R12 to R134. Conversation for another day. But uh, what I have going on, this is kind of an old method. Uh, usually you have a belt and a tensioner Right, you can kind of, it's spring loaded, but this is older, obviously. So being by myself, this is kind of difficult. Um, 
so I have my half inch drive uh, ratchet here. I'm going to put this in the square right here and have this to the position where I can pull it towards me. So put this in here, right? And I kind of have to be pretty crafty here. So I have to pull, right? Make sure I have enough tension on my belt, right? Enough to where I can kind of turn it. I don't want to go, I don't want to yank all this thing to where it has no slack, but I just want to, I just want enough to where I can turn it. So that's pretty good right there. What I'm going to do now is grab my 15 ratchet wrench and I'm going to start to tighten away here, right? So I will uh, do a time lapse so you can see what I got going on. Okay, so now that I have this all uh, set in place, I check the belt, right? I'm happy with it. Just exactly the kind of wiggle I, I'm good with here. Kind of checking a couple points. So, all right. I wish I wished I could have got this one a little sn more snug. It was the best I could do. But hopefully, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. We'll have to test it out. Okay, so we're moving along um, from where we were before. That was the uh, power steering pump and the... Uh, uh, AC compressor um, on to the alternator, air pump almost all the way on. Uh, this has been fighting me today. I feel like I take two steps forward and then one step back, or I take two steps forward, two steps back, one step forward, two steps back. I mean, you kind of get the, the gist of it. Okay, so again, I have to adjust the tension. This time I have to use a pry bar right here on this bracket to get my tension. And then I'll have to use my other hand again to, um, uh, tighten the uh, the adjuster bolt right here. Let me raise this up. Sorry, it's me just it's just me today recording. So let's see if I can put you right here. Mama. Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm recording. Uh, now I have work, so hopefully that's a good view. Let's see if I go if I go ultra wide here. If that helps. Let's see if it'll let me zoom out. Well, looks like it doesn't want me to. Okay, so this is the view you guys got. Hopefully, hopefully it's not terrible of an angle. Okay, not bad. All right, so um, I got my pry bar in here. And I'm going to pull. Sorry, I thought I heard a bee. Gonna get my tension to where I want it, right? I'm gonna grab my 13, wherever the heck that went. Where'd that thing go? Where'd it go, everybody? Right in front of my face. That's usually where tools get left. You can't find those, it's right in front of your face. So. this down okay I also need to tighten this down over here but I think it's a bigger bolt Oops. looks like it's a 15 okay so I don't need this right now at the moment I do need this. So this is kind of the boring part, so I'll, I'll chat so it's not awkwardly silent. But uh, we're gearing up for the end today. I don't want to get in trouble. It is my anniversary. I'm not here working on the car. And I need to go home. And uh, spend the day with my lovely wife. So I'm going to call it a day. I woke up really early today to work on it. Hey, look at that. Oh, that's a little, oh, that's a little loose. I think I'm going to give it a little more tension. Um, but you, you guys, you guys pretty much got the gist of it, right? 
I had to pry this to get tension on, on the belt because the pulleys, when they spin, you wanna make sure that they're not too tight to where they're like damaging things on the bearings, but you want it sitting on here so that the power uh, gets down onto the pulleys, like they're, they're being properly uh, used, that the alternator can turn at the speed it needs to, to generate the power you need to charge your battery, so on and so forth with the air pump, power steering, all those things. So I don't like this, it's a little too loose, so I'm gonna kind of loosen my bolts up, pull a little harder on the pry bar, and go from there. All right, band clutch time. Okay, so this was previously talked about in a video uh, where I think it was the uh, the bad timing video. Anyways, uh, my buddy Jake, he went over it very well, so I'm, not, I'm only gonna do a refresher. This is uh, <clears throat> attached to your fan. Actually, it goes, goes like this, All right? And it spins around, All right? So uh, if you saw the last video, it sh I, I should not be able to do this. This, that's that's all bad. The, the, it's just terrible. <laughs> it's it's useless. It really is. It, it's useless at uh, low speeds because it's supposed to have a lot of resistance. So I went and I got a new one. And it came with new bolts, which I'm. That lightning's getting bad on here. Anyways, I got new bolts. And I got the uh, new fan clutch. So watch, if I try to do the same thing, I'm, I can't just, I'm, I'm really struggling here to turn it. That, that's exactly what we want. So this will, again, watch the last video a couple videos ago let's go into more detail so i'm not going to beat it at a horse but this right here at low speeds needs to be more locked up so that it is spinning at the rotation of our engine so the fan is sucking in air and um at higher speeds when we we warm that you know that coupling up it can just kind of free flow because the air coming from uh, outside is going through our radiator, cooling our coolant, right? Which our thermostat uh, has put us in hopefully open loop, allowing the coolant to go through the radiator and uh, get that nice cool breeze. So, um, oh, it's made in USA. Oh, cool. That's good. Um, that's why uh, this is so important because if you're in stop and go traffic or on the freeway and stop and go traffic or something like that, you can, people can. People usually complain like, oh, my car only overheats when I'm at idle, when I'm stop and go traffic, you know, bumper to bumper traffic, whatever it may be. You know, when you're starting to diagnose, this is kind of where you start looking, you know, right here. What are we doing at idle versus when we drive, you know, when air is flowing, so. Good. Okay, back again. Um, talked about this a couple times. Fan clutch and the fan. Let me tell you something, off camera, I totally forgot how this fan went on there. So, I mean, it's this way. <laughs> I had to rewatch our old YouTube video to see how this came out to get it. So, I'll talk real quick while we're going there. Um, we are close, we're close to starting this thing. I wonder if I can still get it started today. Um, you know, maybe I can squeeze out a little extra time on here before I head home or call it quits. I have to go run through a little checklist, get all the fluids and things like that. Uh, but you know what? It's good to start early. But anyways, um, I got my swivel socket on here, my half inch. Uh, threads, oh, there we go. Threads didn't want to catch. There we go. I just want to get everything started loosely. Um, and then snug them down. And once I get them all started, all right, I don't want another repeat of the torque converter bolts, do I? <laughs> no, that's, that would suck. All right, cool. So they're all started in there. Oops. Drop something. 
So let me get these going real quick. I will fast forward here in one sec. All right, drum roll, please. Ah, check it out. Um, it looks much different than what it did in the morning, right? Got the air pump, alternator. I got the uh, crank pulley, water pump pulley, power steering, air AC all back on um, and ready to go. Uh, but see this little thing coming out of the water pump right there? I have a heater hose that was not wanting to come off when we first initially took it off to do the timing cover, uh, timing chain. So we had to cut it. So now I have to order that. Um, I also have a couple other things like fluids and um, other little minor details that need to be checked and I don't want to rush it. So that's why we are calling it quits today right here, leaving on a high note um, with how it looks. I mean, we're so close to starting this. Um, prime the fuel pump, get the fluids in there. Oil, oil filter, transmission fluid, uh, the drive shaft, and that heater hose, the radiator can go in. I, I don't want to put it in now and leave it out here or, or they'll leave it safe and snug in the garage, but and then filling it up with fluids and, and that's it. Like we're, we're, we're right there. So uh, stay tuned.